So these guys get bamboo twice a day. We gather it on ground currently. Um, luckily, bamboo is just a giant grass. So it is green year round. So we have plenty to draw from for these guys. Um, they also get a backup diet of biscuits and fruit. So we are well stocked with our pandas. Uh, bamboo is probably their favorite part of the day, other than enrichment. So this is our pair. This is Deegan. He is our male and the dad to Tia, our cub that was born here last year. He is always the first one to come out for uh, any kind of snack. He is not lost any appetite over any of all this. Uh, Gan food, much more quiet. She's a little more reserved. Um, she is getting some supplements right now because it is breeding season. Uh, because these guys are delayed implanters, she could actually be pregnant right now, but just not have implanted um, the egg. So we are treating her as if she is pregnant. So she gets extra, we're gonna get some extra treats in a minute. So she gets extra treats. Uh, and also we do ultrasound training with her, which hopefully we'll be able to show you one of these days. moving around in here. There is a panda directly above you. He's kind of a oh. busybody. <laughs> so we like for them to have to do a little bit of work for their treats. Don't want to just hand it to them. So try and make it a little bit tricky for them to get it. their brains engaged trying to figure out the puzzle. Let's see if they go for the easier one first. So these guys have, we call them hands, and they do have an enlarged wrist bone that acts like a thumb so they can grasp onto items and pull them up. They've kind of perfected this trick, this one-handed trick. Normally, Gansu lets Deegan do all the work and then she steals the apples. The delayed implantation is when the egg is fertilized, but it won't implant until the time is right. So some species that live in parts of the world where food is more abundant at certain times, um, they have this ability to make sure they're in a good body condition before they officially become pregnant. Um, they want to make sure that they can provide enough food for the fetus and also once the kid is born. So otters are another animal that can do this. Um, it was always thought that red pandas uh, were pregnant for 138 to 154 days, but now it's believed it's more like 98 days. So uh, this was all found through ultrasounds and also through progesterone studies. A lot of it led by um, Cincinnati Zoo. So we actually can look at the progesterone levels and a lot of animals through fecal samples, which makes life a whole lot easier because red pandas, one thing they do very well is produce a whole lot of poop every day. So he's actually being really good right now. A good, a good male panda lets the female have her way. And so the fact that he is not trying to steal Danzu's treats shows he's a bit of a gentleman. Oh. Gentleman both with people and pandas, though. So. Just curious, little curious. You wanna smell it? Oh, oh, hi, oh, no. Can't have it. Yep, can't eat that. Mm -mm. It's not an apple, even though it's red. So you can kinda see the wheel spinning in his brain <laughs> on how to figure out how to get these treats. 
He's like, oh, okay, I'll take the shortcut. <laughs> Like, oh well. Oh well. Sorry. Yeah, Gansy might be quiet, but she's she doesn't give up easy. Yeah, she's also not sharing. No. <laughs> uh, oh, and, well, it's empty. Uh, so on paper, um, the average age is ten, um, but that means that fifty percent will still live longer. So it is not unusual to have panders that live to be 14, 16, 18 years old. Um, our, one of our oldest in our population just passed away, not at our zoo, but another zoo here in North America, um, last week at the age of 19. Um, the record right now is a panda in Japan, which was 24. So red pandas are found in northern India, up through Nepal, um, around the edge of the Himalayas and into China. The subspecies that we have here, I'm just keeping an eye on Deegan over your shoulder, make sure he doesn't come visit. Um, they are found, uh, they're sort of the Nepalese or Indian red panda, Alurus fulgens fulgens. There's another subspecies, Alurus fulgens refulgens, which is the Chinese red panda. Uh, there is some research that's going on right now that indicates these guys might be extra or actually a separate species as opposed to just subspecies. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So they are now uh, nine months old. So this is the time they should be really enjoying solid food, be off of formula, or if they were with a mom, they would stop nursing. So right now, um, and I'll tell you who you're looking at. So this is Tia, the cub that was born here is closest to you. Um, Asa is the female cub sitting on the, the hammocky thing right there. Um, they, this is Marvin down here. Marvin is our boy that came to us from Tapas. And Volley might be enjoying a little lay down. They, these guys do have a back area they can get back to. So if they want to uh, enjoy a change of scenery, the girls tend to hang out together and the boys tend to hang out together to sort of naturally happen that way. Um, right now, they're all getting some formula every day just to kind of boost their, uh, weight and growth while they are transitioning over to solid food. Marvin, of course, who people might remember, he was nicknamed Starvin' Marvin when he was a cub at his former zoo because he was such a good eater. Of course, was the first one to go for the biscuits and the fruit, and he um, is now over five kilograms, so he is doing quite well. They're all actually on the curve right now where they should be for growth. Um, Marvin and Tia will eventually leave to go to another zoo. They will actually be a pair uh, because while they might be raised together as sort of quasi siblings, they are actually completely unrelated and both genetically important. So they will leave together at some point uh, and we have high hopes for them. Um, Asa and Bali will also be leaving at some point. We won't need to separate them until this fall. Uh, pandas don't breed until they are 18 months old. So we don't have to worry about them being together at this point. So they are all too, too young for that. So red pandas actually were the first pandas to be named panda. They were simply called panda. They think off of a native term, Nagalia panya, which means bamboo footed. And they were first uh, described in about 1823, 1824. There's two guys who kind of thought about who found them first, but uh, Cuvier is the gentleman, the biologist who gets credit for describing them. About 48 years later, someone uh, described and discovered and described the giant panda. And when they looked at the two, because they both had similar diet, they had very similar skulls and teeth, although obviously pretty different in size, and they had the panda thumb. 
um, someone said, aha, this is a giant panda. So they were both put together in the family Alluridae. About 20 years ago, they were actually separated out. So giant pandas are actually bears. They're fancy bears, but they actually belong in the same family of Ursidae with our black bears and grizzly bears and polar bears. And these guys were the only member of the family Alluridae. So if people ever ask you why Knoxville doesn't have the real panda, you can say, in fact, we have the original. This is the one and only panda. Um, in fact, these guys, we kind of joke that they're native to the area. If you go up to the Gray Fossil Site or the Gray Museum, uh, it's about an hour from here, up near Bristol. They actually have uh, fossil records of red pandas in this area. They look a little bit different, but um, they were definitely red pandas. It's the largest find of red panda fossils anywhere in the world. It's pretty exciting to have that just in 